has done a tremendous job with the University of Louisville. Right now they are sitting at third in the AP poll. A chance to be number one when the new polls come out because of South Carolina's loss to Missouri. Mickey DeMoss, the uh, chief of staff, sitting next to our friend Mel Fortner, our former colleague at ESPN, who took them to the Sweet 16 last year. But yes, COVID has reared its ugly head again. We are playing, as you see, but Georgia Tech only has seven players available. The other ones uh, with no specifics are officially unavailable for this game. And we are underway. Louisville wearing the uh, blacks. Chelsea Hall of Vanderbilt transfer gets it to Syracuse transfer Emily Angsler. Rebound taken down by Digna Strotmana. We see right away Georgia Tech in a hard hedge, those on-ball screens. Louisville making them do it three times in a row. Really want to try to wear them down in those hedges. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see this defensive matchup as you take a look. Lorella Kubai, uh, Nell Fortner, the head coach, said that she is the one who really fuels the defense. A lot of energy, very emotional player from Italy. And the good news for Tech, of the seven players available, all five of their starters are available, and they will play a lot of minutes anyway. They don't go very deep on the bench. Lee Love has it blocked, gets it back. And there's some of Kubai's energy hunting down the rebound. Yeah, Tech averages about 13, a little over 13 offensive rebounds a game. When you struggle to put the ball in the hole, getting extra possessions is critical. Yeah, Kubai, in fact, leads the ACC and is fourth in the entire nation, averaging over 12 and a half rebounds per game. There's a good look at Kubai, who last year was the co-defensive player of the year in the league. And for Louisville, their starting five, Haley Van Lith, after a very slow offensive start to the season, has finally found the bottom of the net, could not find that ball as it's turned over. Engsler, Hall, both transfers. Kiana Smith, a transfer from Cal a couple of years ago. And Kubai going to bring the ball up some for Georgia Tech. Yeah, Nell Fortner told us they're going to use her a little bit like a point forward, help her relieve some of the pressure. I mean, it's tough when you're a ball handling guard. You have to bring it up 94 feet against pressure, get him into offense. Nell Fortner. Talk about just how valuable Kubai is. Low to my lot and running the point. You might recall that Loyal McQueen, their point guard, just a few games into the season, entered the transfer portal. So not really a true point guard out there. Lotnin handling the ball most of the time. Kubai with a big height advantage over Van Lith. Strotman on her second three attempt. This one goes in. And that's what Strotman can do. She can really stretch the defense. She has the ability to put it on the floor and has done that a little bit more under Nell Fortner's watch here at Georgia Tech. Was not asked to do that at Syracuse. Really just stand behind the three-point line and knock down threes. Started every game at Syracuse. She was an all-freshman performer. That's her former teammate, Emily Engsler for Louisville, who missed. Kubai able to take it away. And is able to get it across the timeline. Georgia Tech, by the way, has never beaten Louisville. They are 0-8 all time. Lost by 15 points last year in Louisville. And that ball was thrown to the bench. Well, turnovers was a concern for Nell Fortner, and she did say, I'd rather you throw it out of bounds than have line ball turnovers right. for scores. And, and certainly dead ball turnovers allows Georgia Tech to get their defense set. And Georgia Tech is a team that has held on to the ball beautifully this year. Three games, in fact, where they have 10 or fewer turnovers. Smith almost got the roll. Hermosa gives it over to Kubai to bring it in. I thought they only had five turnovers in their opening game this year, Georgia Tech. But this is a whole different dog, isn't it? This defense they're facing. It really is. The pressure, the the, the in-your-face one-on-one pressure, the help help defense. I mean, we saw Louisville earlier this year against against Michigan, and the way that they recover so quickly and scramble and get their hands in the passing lane. That tip ball leading to the turnover. Good recovery by Love, though. To Stop the break. This Louisville team has done a terrific job of shutting down usually 
high productive offensive players like Nas Hillman in the Michigan game that you just referenced. But Louisville having trouble scoring now, three and a half minutes into the game. And a foul out on the perimeter. Engsler got a little bit too much of Kubai. Joe Vasili, Karen Priado, and Fatou Sissoko Stevens, our officials this afternoon in Atlanta. Louisville, much deeper team than Tech, even if Tech had their full complement of players. Early substitution. With Liz Dixon, the former Georgia Tech player, coming back. Kubai dribbles right into trouble. Yeah, Georgia Tech really looking to find a way to get Kubai going off of that on-ball, post-to-post on-ball screen. I think that Georgia Tech has missed some opportunities in transition. When Kubai's bringing the ball up the floor, if she gets a perimeter player on her to just go straight into the post, recognizing some of those mismatches. And, and for Tech, Kubai likes to facilitate a little bit more than she likes to score the basketball, but if they could get her going a little bit more offensively, get her confident scoring the basketball, that just adds another dimension. Yeah, how about she leads her team in assists at just under five per game, which is best on her team and fourth in the entire ACC, and you're talking about a 6-5 post player. Listed well, she's at 6 real, And she's a really heady, high IQ player. As Lily Love knocks down a three. High IQ player that understands the game, really gets more of a thrill from facilitating. But I think for Georgia Tech to be as successful as they can be, she has to be a go-to scorer as well. Yeah, absolutely. Louisville still looking for its first points of the game. Not going to get it there. Kubai comes up with yet another rebound. Louisville has missed all six of its shots to start off. Four and a half minutes now being shut out. Hermosa does a good box out by Dixon. Van Lith comes away from the pack. Kubai coming out and forcing the turnover. Good defense by Kubai. Got Van Lith bottled up on the sideline. And that's one example of what Nell Fortner was talking about with Kubai. She does a really good job of getting out on this hard hedge, of not fouling, of forcing a turnover. I liked it when she said she's going to guard her man and she's also going to guard everybody else's. Yes. I mean, she really yeah. is a high, high energy player and, and anchors their defense. Yeah, we asked her why her defense was so good, and the first thing she said was Kubai. Her energy is off the charts, and as you said, she covers a lot of real estate, covers up a lot of teammates' defensive mistakes. And this is a Louisville team, folks, that averages 71 points per game. Still looking for point number one. Kubai, terrific effort, but could not keep her feet settled. But Georgia Tech so far pitching the shutout. Five and a half minutes in. It's six, nothing. Jackets. Welcome back to Atlanta. Yes, it's six nothing Georgia Tech, five and a half minutes in, and the graphic on the left side of your screen will help to explain that. Steph, they are two of the very best. Those are national defensive ranks, not ACC ranks. Yeah, they are two of the best defensive teams in the country. Both teams really take pride in it. Both head coaches told us they're really happy with where their defense is right now. In terms of their just solid foundation, they haven't had to do a lot of things outside of what they do naturally. And, you know, you can see right away, Georgia Tech just makes you grind it out. Everything is difficult with their length, with their physicality, with their toughness. And right now, it's this Louisville offense that is really struggling. All six points, uh, two three-pointers coming off of Louisville turnovers. Cardinals are 0 for 7 as a team. And they played on Thursday at a convincing win against Boston College in which their starters all but took the fourth quarter off. Jeff Walls was able to get his bench players, a lot of work. Georgia Tech, meanwhile, they haven't played since December the 21st. Now 
Fortner was concerned that they might come out a little rusty. They were supposed to play Pitt on Thursday, but Pitt was in COVID protocol, so that didn't happen. And now look, it looks like Louisville hasn't played in a while. Well, and only seven, players, only seven players available for Georgia Tech. We don't know how long they've only been practicing with seven players or not, how many people have been able to get reps and practice as Chelsea Hall gets out in transition. And this is what Louisville has to do. They're going to be at their best when they can push pace, when they can score in transition. That's going to have to be off of turnovers, off of missed shots. you got to rebound the basketball and go. Transition and pace are the two big catchwords for Jeff Walls on offense. Good defensive play by Cochran. One more. Huh? One more Gotta pass. get that up a little sooner. Van Lith had an open three. Shot clock, still plenty of time. Van Lith trying to cut to the basket, but Lawton doing a good job of sticking her hands in the passing lane. Well, this is what Louisville needs to be doing. They need to push the ball in transition, pass it ahead, or drive it right up, and a good defensive play by Cochran. When you can make those kind of defensive stops, when you can get defensive boards and, and steals and create offense from defense, it takes a little bit of pressure off of your half-court offense. Alana Smith right into the game with the miss. Senior from Charlotte. Yet another turnover. Smith had a great first half. Both of these teams, in fact, beat the University of Connecticut this year. And Coach Walls credited Alana Smith with her great play in the first half that kept them close as they were able to take down the Huskies. Chelsea Hall, a player you know well, played for you over at Vanderbilt. Yes, he did. She was a Starting point guard, four-year starting point guard for us at Vanderbilt. Finishing up at Louisville. It's a very challenging academic schedule. Kono in the game, number 11 in black. Dribbles it off her leg. Another cardinal turnover. Oh, Georgia Tech has turned it over five times in the last six minutes. They had a season low five turnovers for an entire game to start the season off against Central Michigan. They matched that in the first five minutes of this one. Hermosa, good luck, a little bit too strong. Good rebound by Cochran. Both of these teams are really good defensive rebounding teams, so offensive rebounds, there aren't a lot to be had. And that really does put a lot of pressure on your offense to make sure you're getting high percentage looks, the best shots on the floor. Louisville has now gone two and a half minutes without a score, but a chance again for Chelsea Hall. Mikasa Robinson checking in, defensive-minded point guard. And we can just see already, Steph, that, boy, the difference, right, with the depth. We're seeing lots of uh, substitutions for Louisville come in. Tuesday on the ACC Network and the ESPN app after NC State Virginia Tech men's basketball. Second game of our doubleheader, it's Georgia Tech men against number two Duke at Cameron Indoor. That one starts at 9 Eastern time on the ACC Network and ESPN app. Paul is a terrific three free throw shooter, 91% on the season. Got one out of two on that trip to cut the lead in half. And Georgia Tech, they're in a big time drought. It's been four minutes and more ball pressure. It's just Cam, relentless. You, you mentioned the, the depth, and Georgia Tech is not a team that plays a lot of players anyway. They usually have about a seven-player rotation. But when you're having to bring the ball up 94 feet against pressure, Louisville has bodies to keep throwing it at you, and you continue to struggle on the offensive end. I mean, Lodemai Lotnin is, is really the only ball handler on the floor. Kubai is going to be used as point forward, but it puts a ton of pressure. It wears you down. So throughout the course of the game, we need to keep an eye on how this pressure wears down Tech and when Louisville is able to make a run. Yeah, that's that's a good point. It could be a by the fourth quarter, Georgia Tech could be gassed, not just because of the short bench, as you mentioned, but the, the style against their against which they're playing. Lawton and good look. Got it. 
So all nine of Tech's points have come off of three-pointers. I mean, Tech's a team that just shoots it under 30% from the three-point line, so not known for their three-point shooting, but getting a lot of good looks early and knocking them down. Three different players have hit a three, Lawton and Love and Stratmana. Kubai has yet to score. Lawton and sticks her hand in and commits the foul. Georgia Tech is a team that does a really good job of not fouling. Louisville, on the other hand, Jeff Walls the other day said the one thing we're really good at right now is committing fouls. <laughs> so he was saying it's a good thing that they have depth because uh, they're able. And again, here we go. Van Lith coming in for Hall. Keeping fresh bodies out there. As we hit a minute to go in a scintillating first quarter, Van Lith gets hacked on the way to the basket. Love picks up her first foul, and Haley Van Lith heading to the free throw line. Has really started to, to come alive. We had her earlier in the season uh, when they just thrashed Michigan, and she started the year one for 19 from three. That's not good, right, Coach? <laughs> that's, that's not good. Uh, but you know what? The adjustment for Haley Van Lith. We talked about this in, in that game as well. She went from being number two or three on a scouting report with Dana Evans on the floor to being number one. Finding her way through that w is really important. It was really important. And she started to find her way through that. Now she's knocking down shots. She's getting the same shots. She's getting them in rhythm, knowing when to take them, when to facilitate. I mean, it's, it's a learning curve for, for players when you go from on the depth chart on the scouting report from two or three to number one. 83% free throw shooter, Haley missed them both. Kubai bottled up nicely by Dixon. And it results in yet another turnover. You know, certainly Nell Fortner is not happy with the turnovers, but at the same time, they are not leading to Louisville scores. So if you're gonna have them, you do, you want them to be dead ball turnovers, but when you're a team that offensively has a hard time putting the ball in the hole. Every possession is important. Giving yourself an opportunity to get a shot is important. Yeah, you see six turnovers for Tech, but zero points off of them by Louisville. Kono gets it out to Alana Smith for the long three. Kubai comes up with yet another rebound. And now Tech can take the last shot of the quarter if they can get anywhere close to the bucket. And Lawton in with 1.2 seconds left on the game clock, got fouled. So how many times are we talking about this, Pam? You don't want to foul a jump shooter right there. It doesn't even need to be close. Lawton's taking a runner at 15 feet. You've got to just challenge that shot. And last year, the most improved player in the ACC. Average 15 points per game on the senior class award list this year. And that's two gift points because of the Smith foul. And Louisville has set a new low this year. They had seven points in the first quarter, or in a quarter earlier this year, just three this time. Meanwhile, three is raining down for Tech. Not a lot of scoring, but they have three threes and an eight-point lead. Welcome back to Atlanta. One quarter of play is in the books, and yes, Louisville only scored three points in that first quarter, trailing Georgia Tech 11 to three. We expected a, a defensive battle, Pam Ward along with Stephanie White, but this uh, this is taking it to an extreme right now as the uh, shooting percentages for uh, both teams are, as you might expect, not awesome. Uh, Louisville one for 12 in that first quarter. Both of these teams with more turnovers than made field goals, and Georgia Tech is able to take advantage of that. Nine points off of Louisville's turnovers. You know, for Louisville, I would expect them early in this second quarter to really pick up their defensive intensity, to maybe trap, try to get some turnovers that can lead to some offense. Yeah, because that usually is, is the way it works for them. The transition defense. 
Jeff Walls with a little my lot and then trying to get it in. That could be five seconds, and it is. Just at the beginning of the quarter, Alana Smith picked up her second foul for the Cardinals, who are trying to solve Georgia Tech's defense. Number one in the entire nation, averaging just 45 points per game given up. Right, Van Lith couldn't catch up, bailed out at least for now by Smith. Dixon posting up Kubai. That's always a challenge, and she took steps. Yep. One of the difficult things uh, when, you, when you're playing Georgia Tech on the defensive end, they just, they're disruptive. They disrupt your timing. You know, there are a lot of looks that Louisville's getting, but the timing is off when the pass is available is not when they're ready to make the pass. And so that's what Tech does. And now we see Louisville bringing their full court pressure, trying to create some of these turnovers. And it worked like a charm. They give it right back. Here's Kubai, who has not scored yet. Three threes and two free throws by Lottman. That's all the scoring so far. Kubai has to throw one up, hits it! Lorella Kubai, who was one for eight from distance coming into this game, chucked one up and found the bottom of the net. Well, as a team, Georgia Tech on the season is only averaging a little over five threes a game. They found it from the three-point range so far here this afternoon. Boy, and you saw the reaction from Kubai. It was such a fiery, emotional player. She is, and she really is the pulse of this team. And the hard hedge, you're drawing two defenders, the rotation. Kubai steps up and knocks that down with confidence. Yeah, she had Mikasa Robinson in the neighborhood. Robinson, though, only 5'7", <laughs> Lorello about 6'4", and that was that was uh, behind the block line. Kiana Smith, boy, missed badly. One for 13 now from the floor, Louisville. Now Carter with the ball, one of the two players available off the bench this afternoon. Number 15 in white is checked in for Tech. Lottman just getting hounded. This is where you got to score. Right here, you get the trap, you get the rotation. Now you got to score in transition. You don't score, but at least draw the foul. Nice pass from Engsler. Well, you see the adjustment for Louisville coming out in the second quarter. So instead of the hard show, they're coming with the trap, really want to try to create some turnovers that they can get something going on the offensive end. The energy level right now for Louisville has not been where it wants, he wants it to be, so he's trying to turn it up a little bit. Meanwhile, Lodemite Lotnin has just picked up her second personal foul for Georgia Tech. Coming up Thursday on the ACC Network and the ESPN app after Clemson, Florida State women's basketball at 6. We've got this one. Look, Clemson, Florida State at 6. It is followed by the game that we have, which is North Carolina and NC State. So start your Thursday off right with Clemson, Florida State. North Carolina has not uh, lost a game this year, Steph. Leading the, S or the ACC in scoring. They returned all five starters. I mean, Courtney Banghart is doing an outstanding job. This is a team that offensively and defensively is getting it done right now. But I'm looking forward to that matchup. I think that'll be a tremendous challenge in a rivalry game. It'll be a lot of fun. Yep, uh, North Carolina has not played a ranked team yet, but they have been impressive in all their wins. That's an impressive block by Cochran. And does such a good job of timing on her block shots. She uses an outstretched arm. She stays disciplined. She doesn't smack down. Gets a hand on it. That's the third block of the game for Cochran already. Pam, I think those are missed opportunities. When you get shots like that, when you're Louisville, when you get that defensive rebound, you got to run the lanes, put some pressure on the defense, and Cochran gets back to the foul line. Yeah, Cochran doing a good job being aggressive. Coach Walls pointed her out along with Liz Dixon for their play. 
team that does not have a superstar. You referenced it earlier. They had Dana Evans, and before that, Asia Durr, somebody by the name of Angel McCautry a few years ago, and now they're doing it in a totally different way. It's sort of a, it's definitely a team effort, and, and that's one thing Coach Walls loves, as he said, any given night, we can rely on somebody to step up if a teammate's having an off night. Somebody else can come in and pick up the slack. But they, they're not hitting their free throws right now, Steph. <laughs> not hitting free throws, not hitting jumpers. I mean, it is really good to have that kind of balance and have it on any given night where somebody can step up. But also, then who's going to be the go-to? So when you need a bucket, right. when you're in a situation, whether it's in the ball game or whether it's when you're struggling on the offensive end of the floor, when you, you have to have a bucket, who's that player going to be? Right. Yeah, it's nice to have the balance. You know, you're a head coach. Yeah, absolutely. But, but, but you still need a... You still need someone, right? One go-to player at least. And another foul. Take foul charge to number 24, Aliyah Love, her second. Aliyah Love now has two personals for Tech. Well, Cochran, you had mentioned her earlier. Her activity level on the defensive end of the floor has been really good. And Lily Love with the foul right there, but it did stop a break. You don't really, because you don't have a lot of depth, want anybody in foul trouble, but at the same time, that minimized and eliminated Louisville's opportunity to get a score in transition. Louisville still has not cashed in on the Georgia Tech turnovers, which are now 12 on the game. 12 of Georgia Tech's 14 points have come off of Louisville turnovers. Oh. There's a tough shot. Peyton Verholz had kind of a breakout game in their last one. And uh, Coach Wall is finding more and more confidence in the freshman from Kansas. Yeah, 12 points in that matchup against Boston College. I mean, she's a player who comes in highly touted, has a really strong skill set, struggled finding her way early and is starting to find a rhythm. And Coach Wall says they need her, good ball handler, good size, need her to score. She did that almost right away when she came in. Angsler on the go, she has yet to score. Until, nope, that one goes in and out. Dixon working hard on the boards again. Or Cochran, excuse me, Olivia Cochran. Verholst again. Engsler, finally. Her first points, Louisville had missed their first five threes and they are to within six points. 14 to 8, second quarter basketball game. We're back at McCamish Pavilion on the campus of Georgia Tech, and as you might expect from a low scoring game, the shooting has not been great. Louisville has left a lot of points on the free throw line, too. Yeah, they have one of eight from the free throw line. This is a team that shoots it pretty well, typically 73% have struggled from long range. And Georgia Tech, four or seven from the three, certainly why they're out to, to this lead. Now we knew it would be a defensive battle. you know. And, and if you're Jeff Walls, you, you have to talk to your team about the fact that, look, we're getting some good looks. We're not knocking them down. So we have to find a way to get some easy ones now, maybe get some scores in transition, keep shooting our shots, and eventually they're going to fall. And their defense continues to be relentless. Lawton already has five turnovers. And a timeout taken right before the held ball that would have been another turnover with the possession arrow pointing towards Louisville. Another quick timeout in Atlanta. We'll be right back. We're back after a quick timeout. Georgia Tech, Boy Lawton now with six turnovers. And Boy, uh, you see uh, Mickey DeMoss and Nell Fort are got to be talking. How do you how do you escape these traps from uh, Louisville? Yeah, Louisville's doing such a good job of using their speed and athleticism. They get you on the trap, and then they get in passing lanes to the next pass so quickly. There has to be another outlet, maybe slip out of an on-ball screen early, look to maybe exploit from that standpoint, or stay away from some of those little big on-ball screens and go back to trying to utilize Kubai in some of the on-ball screen actions as Aviance Carter gets herself to the foul line. Foul by Kiana Smith, Carter and Carmen Harrison, the only two bench players who are available for Georgia Tech this afternoon. Georgia Tech playing again its first game since December the 21st. 
looking a little bit rusty. That was one of Mel Fortner's, actually the first thing she said to us when we talked to her yesterday, she was concerned about the layoff. She goes, and it's not like you can ease back into it. You're, you're off for that many days and then you have to play Louisville. Right, this is a team that, you know, when, you, when you're off that much, it's not just rhythm and timing, it's also conditioning, game conditioning, game pace, game speed. How do you get back into that? Verholst with a banked in three. She is half of Louisville's points off the bench. Freshman who has not been shy about shooting when she gets into the game. And obviously they need somebody to score. Lottman, seventh turnover. One short of her career high. They are just hounding her. Finish on the other end for Hall. Yeah, and you got to believe Louisville gets a couple more possessions like this where they get some scores in transition. You're going to start to see those jump shots fall. A lot of that is about building confidence. It's about finding a rhythm. You know, Nell Fortner talked to us about a lot and how important it is to have her on the floor as a primary ball handler right now. But sometimes the ball sticks in her hands a little bit too much. We're going to have to, Georgia Tech is going to have to move the ball from side to side, get it out of there as Kubai hits another tough shot. Yeah, that really was tough. And that is the first two-point field goal that Louisville, uh, that, excuse me, Georgia Tech has scored in this game. And that stops a 9-1 Cardinal run. Oh, boy, she's not shy about shooting. Put up she another shouldn't three. be. She shouldn't be. She's, <laughs> a, she's a high school All-American coming in, looking to give a punch off the bench. A great player in Kansas. McDonald's All-American. Cardinal substitution number five, Robinson, checking in Kubai. Does that little, we've seen that before, right? That little European step back off of one leg. Now, I, again, I, I think for Georgia Tech, Kubai has to take a little bit more pride in scoring the basketball, being another double-digit score, consistent double-digit score for this team. Off the out-of-bounds play, Hermosa's first points. Pam, we saw Hermosa knock down a few of those 15-foot jump shots against UConn that really sealed the game for them. You know, this is a player who primarily had scored around the rim before, now have, has extended her range, and it's paid dividends. Yeah, much more of an offensive threat this year. Hermosa, the junior from Spain. And with in for Verhulst, the freshman. Louisville scored just three points in the first quarter, nine here in the second. Robinson bottled up by Kubai, got her over to the open player. Good look to Cochran. Casa Robinson, smart player, doesn't score a lot of points, good defensive player, makes good decisions. Yeah, and you can see Jeff Walls has such confidence in her. She's guarding Kubai. All the way across to Love, a little bit short, then Lith. Terrific effort, then gets it up to Robinson. Goes around Lottman, who's playing with two fouls. Anna Smith dribbles right into the lane. Van Lith bottled up by Hermosa, then gets hit by Love. And that will be three fouls on Lily Love. Hustle by Haley Van Lip, who goes back to the free throw line. Now she is 0 for 2. Her team, one of eight so far in this game. Gosh, Cochran's everywhere. Long three, Kiana Smith a little bit too long. Kubai doing what she does best, her eighth rebound of the game. Boy, Carter, <laughs> he just pulled her way right into the lane and got fouled. Cardinals foul charge to number 23, Chelsea Hall, her first. Third first foul on Hall. Aviance Carter at the line. 
Carter does a good job of using that pass fake, a little Euro step to get around Cochran. And what Georgia Tech was able to do, Pam, Louisville started to get in a little bit of a full court game, right? They started to have a little bit of pace, and, and Georgia Tech has been able to answer that and slow the game back down to the pace that they want. You know, controlling tempo is going to be so important for both of these teams. And especially as the game gets longer and longer, Tech definitely out. Manned as far as available players. Van Lith to Cochran. Robinson as Cochran rolls to the basket. That's a good look. I, I really like how Louisville emptied out the backside because when you're going against a hard hedge, you want to be able to hit that roller. You don't have any help, no rotation on the weak side. Louisville's offense starting to come alive now. They missed 13 of their first 14 shots, have hit six of their last 11. And they're also holding on to the basketball. During that run, they've only turned it over once. And it's a one possession game. Nice, Van Lith. Threw it up, and hoping for a foul, perhaps. And as we hit a minute to go in the first half, Drives on Van Lith. Shut down. Jump ball. Possession arrow. Ball. So Louisville gets it. Ten substitution number 33, Carmen Harrison. Louisville season low, scoring in a half this season, 22 points. They are. Unless they have a huge flurry, they're going to beat that. But it's a lot better than the three points they scored in the first quarter. Boy, Olivia Cochran has been a big part of this comeback. And Lith driving on Lawton in, in and out. And Lawton on the floor with Van Lith. They get it. Uwe wanted to go quick and try to get a two for one. Foul was on Van Lith. Pardon me. And full court pressure by the Cardinals. They have forced 13 turnovers. Georgia Tech only averages 13 a game. Chapman took a step. Now Louisville to get the last shot of this half. Alana Smith coming back in, and will throw the ball in. Robinson goes out. Smith more of an offensive threat. Louisville won the horn set right here. Look for Chelsea Hall to come off of an on-ball screen, maybe get a screen the screener action. Kick it back out. She just came into the game for that reason. Alana Smith ties it up with the three at the buzzer. A 17-6 run to end the half, and Louisville's tied it. Well, that was really good execution by Louisville at the end of the half to get that shot. Georgia Tech jumped out early, but Louisville using a run to close the gap and tie it up. Got ourselves a ball game. We will send you to the ACC Network Studios. Dallin Cuff and Muffet McGraw. And which surprised me when uh, we were doing our research for this, 15 points again against Belmont, her best so far this year. And you would think with her size, and as you said, it, some of the mismatches, especially in this game that Coach McGraw referenced, there's some smaller players that have switched onto her. And you would think that would be a quote unquote, easier way to get points. But nothing's well, I been think easy that, in this game. No, it hasn't. And I think that's a little bit more ownership on Kubai. When you recognize that, if you get rid of the ball, dive down into the paint, ask for it back, demand it back. 
It's interesting because on the defensive end of the floor, she is just a beast. Angsler got one to roll in. That is her second three of the game. Angsler averaging 10 and a half points per game. Very balanced. Three players averaging in the double figures for this team. No big score for Louisville, and they have their first lead of the game. The scary thing about Louisville, if you're an opponent, is that you know they've got they've got six McDonald's All Americans on this team, right? They ha they have players who can score the basketball. They have struggled to find their identity offensively. And Jeff Walls, you can see his uh, enthusiasm right there. <laughs> but once they do find it, and once everybody starts clicking at the same time, this is going to be a really dangerous offensive team. Second foul on Kiana Smith. Lautnin missing from the outside. Good box out by Smith. And much to Stratmana's dismay, the ball goes over to the Cardinals. Louisville had trouble hanging on to the ball in the first quarter in which they only scored three points. No turnovers in the last nine minutes of that second quarter. A little lob for Engsler, who found space. Kubai, as usual, owns the glass. That's a couple of quick ones on Kiana Smith now. Three fouls. by now with nine rebounds, fourth in the nation in rebounds at over 12 and a half per game for Kubai. Anna Smith sits down in foul trouble and they throw it away. And Lith with Kubai closing. Kubai, that was... Yeah, she overpenetrated. She, she yeah. had, after the pass fake, she had a pull-up jumper right in the paint, overpenetrated. She had not just Kubai, but Hermosa in her face. Dropping up from the other side, gets the net. Her second three of the afternoon, ties the game up. Cochran, nice spin move to get around Hermosa. She is enveloped by four Georgia Tech players. And, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about that size and physicality of Georgia Tech. Four players there, straight up, I mean, all length. 6'4", 6'2", 6'5". Ooh. The overhaul doesn't get the roll. Rebound. Cochran steps out of bounds before she could get rid of it. Georgia Tech has been shooting the ball extremely well, and there's Kubai. We mentioned how much she likes to facilitate. She drew multiple defenders, found Strutmana for the corner three. Kubai leading this team, not just in rebounding, but in assists. No true point guard, Lodemai Lotnin, shouldering that load. There's Kubai in the... Go ahead. Angsler's face tells, tells you what she thought of that call. Her third. I'm not sure, you know, what that was unless it was multiple touches, but she had a collapsed arm. There was a little bit of contact, but looked a little bit more like the hot stove touch. Yeah. <laughs> she sat down next to associate head coach Stephanie Norman. This Great right staff. here, Pam, this is the mismatch that Muffet t was talking about at halftime. When you look at Robinson on Kubai, now you've got Smith on Kubai. There have to be moments where you are aware of that, dive down into the paint and ask for the basketball. But instead they got the jumper from Hermosa, who gets the rebound. So right away, right now you have to see this. You have to yes. see that mismatch. That is not the advantage getting it on the elbow. It's getting it down in the paint. Hermosa trying to find space and was fouled in the paint. Yeah, Kubai has had Robinson on her a lot in this game. Robinson at 5'7", as opposed to 6'4". Would you say they're getting her the ball too high, right? Get her, get her a little bit lower. 
Yeah, and that's recognition. I mean, Lodemai Lautinen struggled a little bit taking care of the basketball this game, so maybe mentally a, a little little frustrated. Um, but but recognizing that, and, and again, Lodemai Lautinen's playing the point guard position this year, but you mentioned the Loyal McQueen transferring, Kiara Fletcher out with injury. So she's in a new position, but as you're at this point in the season, you have to start recognizing those things. Cochran with another block. And lift. Robinson just dribbled into a bunch of white shirts and traveled. Karen Prieto getting some words from Jeff Walls over on the sidelines. High ball game. Here we go riding an 11 game winning streak since they lost on opening day to Arizona. And now another foul out on the perimeter, this time on Alana Smith. And that's already five team fouls against Louisville, so Tech will be in the bonus for the rest of this quarter. 6.14 to go. Strotmana, a 67% free throw shooter. Saturday night. At 10 Eastern, after our men's basketball doubleheader, it is nothing but net time on the ACC Network. They will break down all of the day's events and take a look ahead at the best games yet to come right here on the ACC Network. The ESPN app, one app, and one tap. Well, I hit one of them. It tech the lead. Gosh, Kuba using her length. Robinson bailed out the possession. And that's just a prime example of, of using the length. Georgia Tech getting deflections, getting steals. Louisville has the right idea to draw two defenders, but number one, you have to make the pass before you get too deep. Number two, Everybody on the perimeter has to make themselves available. Ball handlers cannot see you if you're standing behind mm. a defender. Make yourself available. Right idea, just don't over-penetrate, and everyone else has to be available. Mosa, there's your offensive put back. Six-nothing, Tech run. Eagles missed six straight shots during this Run. Oh, can't do that. Strotman have forced it. That's another one of those mismatches, too. You know, Strotman is guarding Smith, and you know she's going to close out hard because they want to contest. That's where you have to take that and you have to drive it. Little shot fake, know that she's closing out, recovering, and Smith has the advantage off the bounce. Well, that was just a perfect, uh, like, Whoopsie Daisy, she was getting ready to go, and then a 6-2 with her arm extended made her uh, made her reconsider, but she had already left her feet. This is it right there, that there post up. And look what happened. <laughs> That's what Robinson does. 19 charges in 16 ACC games a year ago. That is what she does. Georgia Tech getting what they want inside, and Robinson just in position and, and takes it. Sold it. Well, Kubai called for the foul, but you're right, that is one of Robinson's specialties, a, a great defensive player. And in that time, she drew the charge. I don't know about that stuff. Well, if, if you're Georgia Tech, you can't let that keep you from going inside to her. That's the right play. Yeah, right. It was the right, right look. And if you're Kubai, you certainly have to continue to be aggressive inside. Jeff Walls has just been called for a technical foul. It looked like Jeff Walls was asking him to review the play. Because Robinson was hit in the face, it looked like he was asking him to review the play. The last play is being reviewed for a possible you see intentional the elbow foul. Up around the head. 
I think it was just a basketball play. But anyway, Coach Walls called for the technical foul. We'll be back shortly. After the technical foul given to Jeff Walls for complaining about them not going to the monitor, the officials went to the monitor, and they have determined that this was a common foul. And it's the right call. I mean, there, there was nothing egregious or excessive. You know, un unfortunately, when you're a perimeter player, you happen to be right at that height. And Mikasa Robinson did a good job of standing her ground, did a good job of selling it, but I think that's the right call. But the technical foul against Jeff Walls will result in free throws. Coach Wall is trying to light a fire under his team. They have had 10 straight empty possessions in the last four and a half minutes. Missing all six shots, turning the ball over four times, but still only trailing by three. Neither team has hit 30% in their uh, field goal percentage this afternoon. Boy, Georgia Tech really being helped by the three ball. They've hit five threes and only three twos. Georgia Tech is not a good free throw shooting team. Only about 62% as a club. Lawton around 71% hits one out of two, and it's a 7 nothing Tech run. Well, and free throws lost of the ball game on the road at Purdue. They had no load lo to my Lawton, but they were still in position to win that basketball game and miss four free throws down the stretch. Georgia Tech with just two losses on the season. One to Auburn and the other to Purdue. Back-to-back -back wins against Georgia and UConn at the beginning of December. Thrust them into the national spotlight. It's a four-point advantage. Timeout in Atlanta. Georgia Tech with a four-point advantage over Louisville, and the respective leading scorers for their teams today have one thing in common. They were both teammates at the University of Syracuse, part of that mass exodus after last season. Emily Engsler and Digna Stratmanon. And there they are, Emily on the bench with three personals for Louisville. You can see the frustration on her oh face. Gosh. She's got to hate this. I know, and she had just looked like she was starting to find a rhythm, a little bit of energy. Robinson drives to the hole. That breaks the drought for Louisville. Really good execution out of a timeout. And as a coach, when you, sit, when you come out on the floor after a timeout, that's exactly what you want to see. There's the matchup, Kubai and Robinson. But off the bounce is not it. Again, too far away from the rim. That was a chancy pass to get into the perimeter. Lawton in for three, a little bit too strong. All right, Georgia Tech is able to corral. 20 seconds reset on the shot clock on the offensive end. Lawton and blocked by Alana Smith. It's really difficult when you play good defensive teams to, to make plays one on one. You know, and, and right now, Georgia Tech not able to get the ball moving. They got a good look in the th a three point shot by Lawton when they got a little bit of ball movement, but it's got to happen quicker. And they need a shot right now. Dubai, tough one. Good box out by Love, who got knocked to the floor by Robinson. Georgia Tech has now missed nine of its last ten shots. First foul on Robinson. On the defensive team last year. And it sends Aaliyah Love, known as Lili to the free throw line. ACC Network coverage of women's college basketball continues on Thursday at 6 Eastern time. Clemson heads down to Tallahassee to take on Florida State. That's at 6 Eastern time on the 
ACC Network and the ESPN app. Kubai, another rebound, this time off a missed free throw. And after Clemson, Florida State, we will have North Carolina NC State for you on Thursday night. Unbeaten, North Carolina. Clock dying again. Oh my, with five seconds left on the shot clock, Dixon commits the foul. Dixon played her freshman year at Georgia Tech. She was on the all freshman team, started every game. Under the previous coaching staff. And there you see her numbers, Carly and graphics all over it. Not needing to do as much, right? You say, well, the numbers right. are down at Louisville, but she's got a, a much more productive supporting cast. Yeah, th there's no question. She's more of a piece at Louisville. And Jeff Walls has spoken very highly about Liz Dixon and her ability to come in and make an impact on this team defensively, rebounding the basketball, scoring when needed. Tech is only 7 of 14 from the free throw line. They're not taking advantage of eight Louisville fouls in this quarter. Bono back in the game. Lana Smith. Kubai. The shot didn't go, but that was good execution. You know, got a couple of ball reversals, forced to help, forced to rotation, and got an open look. Dubai now with a dozen rebounds, just under her season average. 12.6, Hermosa, nice look. Got and I just got some smoothness on the offensive end, doesn't she? She does, Hermosa? she does, and I, and I continue to be impressed with her confidence shooting that 15-foot that jump shot. You know, that earlier in the season, she was not shooting that with as much confidence. She was hesitating. I think we saw her take that next step against UConn. She hit a couple of big ones for Georgia Tech in that upset. Cochran, good help from Kubai to shut her down. They need a shot, won't get it. Kubai got her hands in there. 10 to two Georgia Tech run as we hit two minutes to go in the third quarter. Georgia Tech trying to upset the number three team in the country. Time Hermosa missed wide left. Cochran over Hermosa doesn't get the bounce. Gosh, Kubai now has 13 rebounds. She had a career high tying 20 at Purdue earlier in the year. I mean, she is just a beast on the board. She's got such a natural knack for knowing where the ball is. No one in the history of Georgia Tech women's basketball has had as many rebounds. She is fifth on their all-time block shots. And today, Kubai is tying the Georgia Tech record held by several players playing in her 134th career game. Taking advantage of the COVID extra year as Nell Fortner says something to her. Mosa at the line. He's gotten some, expand, uh, some experience, pardon me, with the Spanish national team program. And there you see the numbers continuing to climb for her. Continuing to get more confident on the offensive end of the floor. Continuing to get more touches. 12-2 run makes it a seven-point advantage for the Jackets. Oh, Cochran couldn't hang on. Thought she was pushed and does not accept the, I'll let you, I'll help you up hand from love. That was a missed opportunity for Louisville because she was open. You, know, you, don't, you don't get too many chances and too many opportunities where you have a wide open roller to the rim. Kubai showing her handle and then tried to get into Hermosa, couldn't keep it in bounds. 
Is that a chance there maybe where, her, where uh, pardon me, Kubai should have just gone to the basket instead of passing it? Yeah, I think again, you know, she's so good and, and, and naturally gifted in facilitating and probably takes more pride in that, but sometimes at the expense of her team. You know, you can go to the rim and get a score, potentially an and one, potentially a fourth foul on Emily Engsler. Right. Georgia Tech season high is 18 turnovers. They are one shy of that. And lift. There's Angsler. That was a great pass. A really good cut and a great pass. That's that 12 to 2 run. Louisville has only scored seven points in this quarter. They had three in the first quarter. And they will be down by five as we head into the final 10 minutes of action. Georgia Tech trying to pull off the upset against the Cardinals. Lying heavily on some outside shots, Jeff can't bear it. It's coming only two and a half months from now. The NCAA tournament will get underway, and uh, Jeff Walls has really done tremendous things. This program had not even gotten to a Sweet 16 before he came, and that's a great way to start things off for Louisville, who only had seven points in the entire third quarter. That's Kiana Smith with the bucket. It's Again, execution out of a timeout. Yep. Then execution out of a timeout. So an opportunity to get a, a quick score and Louisville executed. Now they got to pick it up on the defensive end. And the officials look at each other and they call it a charge. Offensive foul charge to number 24, Love Love now has four personal fouls. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you. And Georgia Tech only has seven players available this afternoon. That was just really good defense by Haley Van Lith taking that charge. And, you know, we talked a little bit early about Haley Van Lith's offensive struggles early in the ball game. And Jeff Wolves continued to compliment her on the defensive end of the floor. She continues to do exactly what we need. But this is a team that takes great pride in individual defense. And that was another example of it right there. Just a sophomore out of Wenatchee, Washington. And she drew a foul this time. Lottman's third. Haley Van Lith, by the way, only has one point. 0 for 6 from the floor and just 1 of 4 from the free throw line. As a team, they're 2 of 10. Shooting 30% from the floor, which is better than Georgia Tech's 26%. <laughs> we expected a defensive clash, and we certainly are getting it. Tied up with nine minutes to go. Carter now bringing the ball up. Another one of those mismatches right there. Haley Van Lith on Lorella Kubai. That's a big one for Lottman. They depended on the three earlier in this game. How about Georgia Tech only has two paint points in this game? <laughs> With all those mismatches and size advantages we've been talking about? Certainly not what we expected, but Jeff Walls talked about he wanted to make sure that they hit him at the free throw line, that they didn't allow him to get easy, easy position. And the fortunate thing for Georgia Tech is that they're knocking down shots, and that was a tough shot by Van Lith. Nice little step back. That's Haley Van Lith's first field goal of the afternoon. A long two. She averages 11 and a half points per game, second only to Kiana Smith's 12. There you go, Kubai, but too strong off the glass. Good, Larry. Yep. 
That's a really good look. And she had Aviance Carter on the back side, but took the one or two dribble punch and found the three-point shooter in Stratman. That is the third three made for Stratman. Gets the advantage back up to four points. Georgia Tech has had an answer. Every time Louisville's made a run, they've come back with a big defensive stop or come back with a big three. Oh, there's a counter. Kiana Smith. It's going to be scary if Kiana Smith gets going. She's hit two right now in this fourth quarter. Chuck Wall said he would be shocked if this game didn't go down to the final few possessions, and it has the earmark for that right now. And another forced turnover, and they give it right back. Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. Could have been a huge momentum swing for Louisville to get a three and then get a score in transition. Georgia Tech now with a season high 19 turnovers. They've converted into 11 Louisville points, trying to get it inside to Kubai, who was held by Cochran. This dribble punch by Kubai. We have talked about it. She has such a knack for finding her open teammates. Really good job of executing. And then on the other end, the back screen pop. Good execution. Kiana Smith starting to heat up. Smith with a couple of threes. Kubai now with four assists to go along with her 13 rebounds for Tech. Now posting up. Kiana Smith, high dribble. Stratman again. You can't take that chance right there if you're Chelsea Hall. Stroutman has hit three threes up until that point. That being her fourth, that is not the one you want to leave. And then Anxler using her quicks to get around Kubai. Anxler very fit. Started her career at Syracuse. Otten in a little bit of space, left it short. Engsler kept it alive for Van Lith. Over the legs to push pace. Kubai, a little head fake to get around Hermosa and then is fouled in the lane. For Cochran and Kubai might be a little shaken up. Right in a second. Cochran at the line, shooting two. Kubai, I think, has played every second of this game. Certainly with a limited bench, and the fact that Kubai has kept herself out of foul trouble, fortunately, for Georgia Tech, so she will be continuing to find a lot of minutes. I mean, she anchors it. We talked about this, anchoring the defense. They run so much through her on the offensive end of the floor. It's really tough on Georgia Tech if she's not in a ball game. That's such a vital piece. You know, Cochran, one of two on that trip, has missed five of her six free throws this afternoon and came in as a 77% free throw shooter. A little hook. Keep going to that. If you can get her the ball in that position, keep going to that because she's a willing passer. So if Louisville brings a double, or if somebody digs in, she will find her open teammates. And those were only the third and fourth paint points of the game for the Jackets. They lead by three, under five minutes to go. Good finish coming your way. In Atlanta, Stratmana rain and threes, and then Kiana Smith answers on the other end. Dicka. Here in Atlanta, and yes, that is the one and only Angel McCautry playing in the WNBA now for Las Vegas. Unfortunately, was hurt this past season. Our colleague who lives full time in Atlanta, and Jeff Walls came in midway through her Louisville career, and he said that Angel said to him, Coach, can you find a way 
to get us past the second round of the NCAA tournament because they literally had never been past the second round. And not only has he done that, he's taken them to 10 Sweet 16s, three championship games, but Angel McCaudry was the first superstar that he coached. She sure was, and one of the best to ever do it. Still going strong. Oh, that's nice work by Hall. Breaking him down off the dribble. Really great job getting two feet in the paint and finishing. One point ball game. And again, execution out of a timeout for Louisville. Yes, they've been quite good at that. Kubai, top shot over Anxler. Yes, Pam, keep going to her. Kubai continue, needs to continue to do her work early, get two feet in the paint, not allow Louisville to push her out. Back-to-back -back paint points for Kubai. Anxler, great offensive rebound. Cochran able to save it. And Lith with the miss. Kubai all by herself to pick up yet another rebound. And Georgia Tech again regaining pace, regaining their composure. Keeping the tempo right where they want it. Okay. One down, slow it down. Rotman well short on that shot. Sixteen boards for Kubai. Georgia Tech has never beaten Louisville. They are 0-8 all time. And Nell Fortner, I think she, maybe just to get Kubai a little rest as well. Because she's, I don't blame her, man. She's been out there every second. She's taken a lot of, a lot of physical pressure. And now Coach could settle everybody down and get them a little bit of a breather. Yeah, she looks a little fatigued right now. Now, Nell Fortner was concerned about this layoff and her team's conditioning, being in, in game shape, limited in practices. But you also want to make sure right now in this three-point ball game, out of this timeout, that you get exactly what you want. In the last few possessions, Kubai down low getting a touch has been successful, so trying to find a way to get her a touch down low. Dubai with 16 rebounds, nine points, five assists. Trying to get what would be a huge win over the Cardinals. Already adding to a resume where they've beaten both Georgia and Connecticut. And Leah Love checking in as well for Tech for Carter during that last timeout. She's playing with four fouls. Kubai bottled up by Cochran, put it up anyway, and went in. Kubai coming alive now. You got to keep feeding her. You got to keep giving her looks. So Louisville will change the defender. Cochran was on her, and Kubai then took her off the bounce. And that's the versatility that Nell Fortner talked about with Lorella Kubai. And then the low pass into Cochran. Possession arrow in favor of Georgia Tech. I want to remind you, Tuesday on the ACC Network and the ESPN app, there'll be a men's basketball matchup with NC State and Virginia's second game. Always a beauty. Duke taking on Georgia Tech at Cameron Indoor coming up on Tuesday. Check it out on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Pam Ward and Steph White joining you here from Atlanta, where Georgia Tech has the ball and a five-point advantage over the number three team in the country. Kubai has scored Georgia Tech's last six points, all of them in the paint. And another tie-up. This time the ball goes to Louisville. We talked about the minutes played by Kubai, Steph. 
Uh, Harrison off the bench, Carmen the freshman, one minute. Carter off the bench, 17 minutes. Everybody else has played. The other, everybody else has played every single minute, including Kubai. Lotman sat for a little while with some foul trouble, but just down to seven players, and so far so good, they're up five. Well, this is not a team that plays a lot of players anyway. He's short rotation. You know, Fornell Fortner's team, and Kubai continues to make big plays, hustle plays. But as Nell Fortner seven. mentioned, yeah, and as Nell Fortner mentioned, just concerned about fatigue at this point because there was such a long layoff. Last game was December the 21st, had a game called because of COVID with an opponent. Anxler, this is one of the things she does so well and is able to score on the other end, barking because she wanted the foul call. She's going to have to be careful because she's been yeah. barking at the officials the last couple of possessions. But Louisville's changed up their defense the last two possessions, going a little bit more scramble in the 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court trap. Oh, Love had Hermosa, but threw it away. Well, and, and what it's done in the last few possessions is not just the turnovers, but it's speeding Georgia Tech up. So in the man-to-man, -man, Georgia Tech has walked the ball up the floor, been very deliberate. These last two possessions, Louisville's picked it up a little bit, forced tempo, and forced yes. three straight turnovers. That has been Louisville's strength. And thanks for throwing it in. Jeff Wall says that he has not had a player since Angel McCautry who could be so disruptive as far as getting into passing lanes and forcing turnovers. And that's pretty good company. Ben Lith. Got a really good look, but a foul call on Georgia Tech after Cochran's rebound. And Olivia Cochran has been so big for Louisville. She's been huge on the glass. She's done a, such a good job defensively of anchoring. She's made big plays. Yes, she has her 11 rebounds this afternoon, a new season high. She has tied a career high with three blocks as Aaliyah Love has just fouled out for Tech. But Cochran's at the free throw line where she has missed five of six this afternoon. was a big one, hit the back of the support and still went in. One point game, full court pressure for Louisville. We're going to continue with this trapping action. It's been successful the last few possessions, but Georgia Tech gets it back right now. Lorella Kubai has to get a touch. She has come up big. There she is, but she's got Angsler on her now, a better defensive matchup for Louisville, but Kubai draws another foul. Cardinals foul charge number 21, Emily Engsler, her fourth, second team foul. His fourth foul on Engsler, just the second team foul. Lorello Kubai at the line is shooting. But it was a shooting foul. Kubai heads to the free throw line for the first time this afternoon. She is only a 50% free throw shooter on the season. Couple of big ones. Time out. One out of two. It's a two point ball game. Time out. Taken. Just a 30-second like timeout. Louisville Park they took that timeout. Go ahead, Steph. And, and I like this timeout by Louisville. You know, you, you, you got to know your team, and you have options to push with this much time on or to, to stay and call a timeout. And I like this because we have seen Louisville in this fourth quarter in particular execute very well out of a timeout. So when, when, when Jeff Walls has drawn up something, they've been able to go out and they've been able to execute it. So right now, a tremendous opportunity for after timeout execution. And they have been quite good at that in this game. This is uh, the best scoring quarter for Louisville. 19 points for them after a three point first quarter and a seven point third quarter. 
trying to pull out what would be their 12th straight win. Move by another double double, her sixth of the season. Van Lith, that little big way, ties it up. Neely Van Lith, another successful play for the Cardinals out of the timeout. And look at the confidence. I mean, Haley Van Lith has struggled from the floor, but she is so good in the mid-range. She hit a mid-range jumper against UConn that helped seal that basketball game as well. Really good execution. And she shot that over Kubai, an outstretched Kubai hand. And we saw Angel McCautry there, who was uh, turned into a, a cheerleader for her Cardinals. Watching the game, there's Angel, who has uh, done some games for us now at ESPN. It's like, looks like her knee's doing well. Pam, what did Jeff Wall say year? to us? Jeff Wall said to us in our, in our production meeting, he said, first team to 50, right? Yeah. First team to 50 That's can right. win this ball game. And we didn't think we'd get there, but because of this outburst of scoring between the two teams, 37 points between the two teams just in this quarter. And boy, what another, you're right. Boy, Van Lith had missed, she was, now two of ten, so she'd missed eight of her first nine shots and then made that tough one to tie it up. Well, and we questioned earlier in the ball game, you know, who gets the ball at crunch time? When you need a right. bucket, who gets the ball? And, and Haley Van Lith is one of those players. you got to have short-term memory when you struggle, and you can see it right here, even the first six games, one of 19 from the three, you alluded to it, eight of 19, the last six. But shooters have to shoot, and playmakers have to make plays, and you have to have short-term memory, forget about everything up until that point, and that was a big, big play for Haley Van Lith and Louisville. And you see the numbers bear out what you were just talking about, and Coach Wall said it wasn't necessarily, she wasn't taking bad shots. She said it was just as simply, at the beginning of the year, they weren't going in. They were not going in earlier in this game, but Van Lith took that tough shot, made it, and we're tied up. Virginia Tech, or excuse me, Georgia Tech out of timeouts. Carter back in the game. Big three, Lottenen, no, and the shot clock is off for Louisville. They have a couple of timeouts, but will play on. Until now, timeout with 14.6 seconds left to go. Georgia Tech got a good look. Aviance Carter had the ball in her hands. She hadn't been in a lot in this ball game and finds Lautenen. Look my Lautenen not able to finish that play. Lautenen had hit a couple of threes earlier in this game. Now Louisville down one timeout. Georgia Tech trying to hang on. So we just saw Haley Van Lith come up big for Louisville. What do you think Jeff is drawn up there to try to win this? Well, I think they're going to get something going to the rim again. They've gone to the elbow action the last two or three times out of a timeout, getting a handoff, running a split screen first, then coming off of a handoff. You know, I would expect Georgia Tech to switch just like they did the last possession, but certainly giving Van Lith the ball in her hands to make the decision to score it or to facilitate but each of these last four times that Louisville has come out of a timeout, they've got exactly what they wanted. And so you have to feel confident if you're Jeff Walls, you have to feel confident if you're in this huddle right now, that hey, we're gonna get what we want. Now we just gotta finish it. See, Louisville is in the bonus, have been in the bonus since just under five minutes were left to go in this quarter. Olivia Cochran, Chelsea Hall, Angsler, Kiana Smith as Van Lith throws it in. Those are the players out there for Louisville. Hall with the ball in her hands. Angsler, calling for Van Lith, founds a path to the basket, and Emily Angsler puts it in. No timeout for Georgia Tech, so they can't advance it. They need a desperation shot, and Emily Angsler Saves the day for Louisville. They close the game on an eight to one run. And despite a three 
point first quarter. Louisville wins this game. So Emily Angsler coming in, nailing the game winner, leading her team. The only one in double figures with 14 points. What a game. 12 straight wins now for Louisville, for Steph White. I'm Pam Ward. Time now to get you to Duke Notre Dame with Jen and Kelly.